In this video, we'll introduce two concepts that may help you in the future uh, when discussing software programs and applications that you'll write. And those are what's a software library. Here, let me just write this down, a software library. And the other one is what is an API? API is an acronym that stands for application passing interface. Now my stylus actually seems a little big here. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. There we go. So I'm using this, um, I'm using the, this interface where I can write freely, um, mostly because these concepts, so the software library and the API, actually allow us to abstract out a lot of the code. So for this particular video, I'm gonna do this in two parts, is when we're just going to, going to introduce concepts, and in the second part, I'll actually switch to a, a MATLAB or actually the Octave environment to, um, to give you some examples of a software library and an API. So when we're writing when we're writing software, uh, you'll get to a point where you have to interface different functions or different applications with other ones. Uh, in the in the MATLAB world, in the MATLAB environment, that is um, mostly represented, that uh, mostly comes about calling a function from another function. This happens often, and this is probably why you're here, this happens often when um, using uh, ordinary differential equation solvers. So, for example, one standard ordinary differential equation solver that MATLAB provides is called ODE45. Oops. ODE45. There are others that are equivalent, so ODE23, ODE15S, among others, but ODE45 is often our first stop. So each one of these, OD45, OD23, OD15S, are themselves software. So you call them from the command line. It looks roughly so a, a line of MATLAB code would look like this. You would call it saying T Y is equal to say ODE45. And then you have to specify a function uh, that you'll prepend with at and then your function name. And then you give it some inputs there's usually the span, 0 to 1, blah, 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 and more options. And when you call this line in these two variables, t and y, you'll get the actual solution of the ordinary differential equation integration. So this is a numerical integrator. This part on the right is actually, uh, actually right away, this uh, introduces our two concepts. So that of a software library. So here we have a part of MATLAB, so part of the functions that are provided with MATLAB are itself a, or a, so you could call it a sub-library. So there is a software library. Software library uh, for differential equation integration. What's a software library? It's really just a collection of programs. So in this case, I'll just represent these programs as boxes. So one of these is ODE45. One of these is ODE23. One of these is ODE15S. Each one of these functions, which are itself a piece of code that's running in the background when you call it, each one of these is an individual function that performs the same overall goal. ODE45 over here, that one, I mean, ODE45 or ODE23 
or ODE15S, they all achieve the same overall goal, goal that is they numerically integrate a differential equation. They do so in slightly different forms. So ODE45 uses a Runge Kutta 4 and a Runge Kutta 5 to estimate to estimate um, error. Uh, ODE 23 uses a combination of Runge Kutta 2 and Runge Kutta 3. And ODE 4.5S will use different methods. The S over here, that stands for stiff. That's just a side note. So in MATLAB, any numerical integrator that has an S at the end actually is aiming to integrate stiff differential equation systems. Okay, so all of these, we could say that these three functions together, we think we can think of as our software library. You can literally think of it as a library. You want to solve a problem, that is you want to solve a system of differential equations or a single differential equation, which you want to integrate numerically. You can go to your library, just like a normal library for books, and I can pull out one particular method that will achieve the goal that I want. I could either try to use ODE45, or I could try to use ODE23, or I could uh, try to use ODE15S. Each one of these methods or each one of these functions is essentially like a different book inside my library that I can check out and then use. Now, in order to make this process of using one function or a different function, in order to make this process as easy as possible, we define an API. So we define an API or an application passing interface. And we'll define an API, not just an API for each of these, but we'll define an API that is common to all the interchangeable interchangeable functions in my library, in the library, in the software library. What does that mean? Here, let me just scroll back up for a moment. That means that in this line of code here, uh, if I program it using ODE45, and then I find that, well, the results aren't quite satisfactory, let me try a different solver. Let me try ODE15S. I can just come in, erase ODE45, just change it for ODE15S, and this line of code will execute just fine. That is, it won't return an error. It'll actually try to get an answer. Why can we do this? Because the API of ODE45 and ODE15S is the same. What is the API? The API is this bit over here. That is the order, the nature, the order and the nature of every input And also over here, the order and nature of every output. So what an API does is it standardizes the way that I interact with a particular piece of software. In this case, that is a ordinary differential equation integrator in MATLAB. The way I interact with any one of these, either OD15S, 2345, is actually standardized. The API consists of a handle to a function. Here, let me go to a new page. So the API of differential system integrators is 
in MATLAB consists of, on the input side, the first input must be the handle of a function. The second input must be the, and at this point I forget I'm doing it from memory, but it must be, for example, the span of the independent variable. These are required inputs. There's another required input, which is the initial value of every dependent variable. Then there are optional inputs. For example, there is a the absolute error maximum. And then I'll just put little dots to say that there are other optional inputs. Now this is uh, the meaning of each input. And there are variations I can elect to specify. So for example, or I can't elect, but the, the API specifies that the span of the independent variable that must take the form of a vector of at least two numbers, start and end. The initial value of every dependent variable, that must take the form of a vector that has the same length as the vector of dependent variables on the output. We'll specify that one in a minute. And it must have one scalar per input. So in this case, if I have three dependent variable, then I would have three initial values. On the output, my differential equation integrators return a first output t, which is a vector of all the computed values Of the, of the independent variables. Variable, get rid of that extra i. Then it returns a vector y, which is a matrix where each column is one of the dependent variable. So that the vector t is going to have a length where each one of these is the value of my independent variable. Let's say there is n computations. So n is the length of my vector t then y is going to be a matrix where each column, this is y1, my first dependent variable, y2, y3, and I'll have m dependent variables. And on the vertical side, this will have length n, so that each value is the computed value of a dependent variable corresponding to a particular independent variable, t. Let me give, so this is the API of the overall differential integrator. Let me give another example that is related to uh, differential equation integration, and that is the API of the function you have to pass. So let me come back up here. Let us come back, I think it's on the previous page. There we go. So if we come back to uh, the call of one of our differential integrators. Again, we can substitute the actual uh, differential integration method as we wish because they all have the same API. They all return the same 
the same variables, the same type and numbers of variable, and they all take on the input the same number and types of variables. We must pass it the handle of a particular function. So this is a function that defines the differential equation system. Here, let me try on a blank page. That function has itself an API. So MATLAB does not know what's going to go into that function. That's what your physics problem, your particular physical problem dictates. Only you know this. But MATLAB specifies, or MathWorks, which is MATLAB, has specified what is, what is the API of that function. It must be, so you give it a function. So here in MATLAB lingo, we'll define, we'll have the keyword function, and then we'll have the outputs equal to, here's the function name, and the inputs. And in the most basic case, your function must have two inputs, T and Y. And it will return a set of numbers. Okay, so what are these? Um, what are these? Uh, what are the number, the nature of each input and output? So in the input, your function receives T, a scalar. That is the current value of the independent variable. It also receives Y, a vector Uh, and this vector contains the de the dependent variables. On the output, your function returns here. Let's just call it. Let's just call it out. A single variable. It is a vector. the derivatives of each of the dependent variables. So T as a scalar is just a single number. Y is going to be a vector and so if I have three dependent variables, here our scalar is called t, then my vector y is going to have length three. Out is also a vector, same length as y, and it contains the derivative, the value of the derivatives, dy1 dt, dy2 dt, dy3 dt. The first uh, component of that vector, the first component of that vector is the derivative corresponding to the first element of the vector y. This derivative corresponds to the derivative of that dependent variable, and this third derivative corresponds to the derivative of the third dependent variable. And really that's it. So now it's up to you to write a function that a differential equation uh, integrator can accept. So for example, if I want to represent, so if my mathematical problem is dx dt is equal to 
y squared z dy dt is equal to z minus y, all of this times x, and dz dt is equal to z times x. Oops, excuse me, z x. So this is my differential equation system for the three functions, the three unknown functions, x of t, y of t, and z of t. How would we write a MATLAB function that represents this system? We would write a function and instead of just calling, just writing a single uh, output out, here I'll right away specify dx, dy, dz is equal to, I'm going to name this, this is an example system, this is the name of my function, and the inputs have to be one independent variable and a vector y. So I like to first rename my variable, so I'll here declare x is equal to y1, y is equal to y2, and oops, we're going to have a problem here because we're using the variable y twice. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we can name this second variable whatever we want. I'm going to call it um, vars, or here, let's call it depths for dependence. So now I'll modify my first few lines. X is equal to depths of one, Y is equal to depths of two, Z is equal to depths three. Again, the API does not specify so much what the name has to be. It just says that the first variable to come in has to be a scalar. The second variable has to be a vector with the length of the size of our differential equation system. And that's really it. We can name this variable whatever we want, and we can do this because these are dummy variables. These variable names only exist within our uh, function unit here. So now we're just going to write, we're just going to calculate the actual values of the derivative. So what I call dx, which is dx dt, is simply y squared z. So now that I've made this correspondence here between sort of the physical names or the mathematical names and the name of my variable, I said it is y squared times z. I'll just write y two times z. dy is equal to z minus y times x and dz will be equal to z multiplied by x. And that's it. So on the one hand, we have here the mathematical description of our problem. And in a second time, we have a MATLAB function, which represents for the MATLAB system, the differential system. When this function gets called, I don't know what the value of t is going to be. I don't know if it will be 0, 1, 12,000. I have no idea what this value is. I also don't know what the values of x, y, and z are going to be. But for any value that they have, I can compute what the corresponding derivatives would be. So not knowing what the values are in the inside, I don't know what the return values are, but I do know how to compute the derivatives from the inputs. And this is what the basic concept behind an API. If my function respects the outputs and the inputs that have been defined in the application passing interface, then any, um, any differential equation integrator that also respects the MATLAB API will be able to accept that function.